go ahead and start here in the parking lot. Cool. Um, I wanted to ask you guys what brings you joy because as I was listening as we went around, most of the, the key component that a lot of you said was connection. Whether it was connection with the natural world, with the plants that you were holding, or connection with other people, or connection with nature at large. And for me, that's, that's kind of what permaculture is all about, is about connection. How many ways can you get things to connect um, with each other? Different plants connecting with each other. How do different things connect with the soil? How do they connect with the air? How do they connect with the people? How do they c connect? You know, and the more connections that you can make, the happier everything is. The happier you are because it brings you more ease. The happier the plants are because they're getting their needs met. And hopefully they're getting their needs met without a lot of input from us. So that makes us happier. <laughs> One of the other things that brings me tremendous joy living here is that we are a living experiment. Okay, we have been mm. in process doing this for six years. And everything we do is an experiment. So I'm going to share with you our current experiments. I'm going to share with you our past experiments. What do I know has worked? What do I know has not worked? And from that, you can take what you choose. Okay. As far as gardening, we're still definitely experimenting, trying to find out what works the best. And uh, when we get to that part of the land, I'll share that with you. Right now in permaculture, they have this thing they call zones. And zones are looking at where you are and where you spend your energy and your time, okay? So zone zero is yourself. And then zone one is the closest to where you spend the most of your time. And you could visualize it like a bullseye, but it's not. It's a matter of where do you go. Zone one might be the path between your front door and the mailbox, right? Um, zone one isn't necessarily right next to your house. If you lived on a cliff, the back side of your house is definitely not zone one because you never go there. And then zone two, that's a little bit further out. That's where you're going to have stuff that needs some attention but not a lot of attention. And gradually as you get further, zone three, even less attention, but you go there periodically. That's more like your orchards that have seasonal fruit. And then zone four, well that's where you might have a timber orchard, you know, even less attendance. And then by the time you're in zone five, zone five is considered wildlands. We do the same thing in our gardens. We'll have a little cluster or possibly a row of one kind of plant and a cluster or a row, but we wouldn't have a whole massive area the size of the parking lot planted out in a single crop. No monocrops. Because those encourage pests that can then decimate the whole thing at once. And that's a bummer, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So we want to avoid that as much as possible. Aww. Chickens, they lay way better if we Are give them green? some grain. We're trying to, you know, grow more substitutes, give them more peach palm, do all, you know, but it's going to take time before we get those right. systems in place. Is there a grain cover crop? Yeah. We're working on it. I'm working on trying amaranth. And um, sesame seed, I just read, is really good for humid tropics, so it's really wet. Mm. But the bunnies just eat weeds. The bunnies just eat weeds. So they're 100% weeds in, poop out. Well, right now they're just friends. Okay.